Today is March 23rd, 2011. It is my pleasure to be interviewing Elsie Ralph for the Jewish Historical Society of Lower Fairfield County. My name is Elisa Kaplan, the interviewer, and Marcy Schoenfeld is the videographer. Hi, Elsie. How do you do? Let's start at the beginning of your story. Can you tell me uh, where you were born and when? Yes, indeed. I was born in New York, and uh, the first few years of my life, I lived in the Bronx, one block from the Bronx Zoo. And my father used to take me to the Bronx Zoo from the day I was about two days old, I think. It, it, was, it seemed as though that was a weekly jaunt. Uh, every single week, we went through the, the entire zoo, looked at all the animals, and um, I continued that all the way through my teen years. Can you tell us what your birthday is, the day and month and year? I was born February 21st, 1916, which is kind of hard to believe. That was a long time ago. And I lived through a lot of wars. Now we want to hear about that. Well, but first I'd like to tell you about the milkman that used to come to our apartment. We lived on the first floor, the ground floor of an apartment house on 185th Street. The milkman used to put a bottle of milk at the door every single morning. Later on, the ice man would come and crack up a big block of ice and carry it in with clamps, carried it into our house and put it in the ice box. No refrigerator, just an ice box. You keep the food in one section and the ice goes into another section. And it's hard to believe today, but that's the way we manage things. In the winter time, if we had a little extra food, there would be a box on the window outside and some of the food would go into that box in the window when the window was closed of course and that was one of the things the other thing i remember about that is the the uh, man the organ grinder who used to come around with his monkey and i would look out of the window which was very close and give the monkey a few pennies. There was also a merry-go-round that used to come around weekly. I think it was about five cents a ride. Four or five horses on the merry-go-round. The entire thing was pulled by a horse, of course. And they, by the way, there was always something in the street. The horses always left a little present for us. <laughs> <laughs> so. But the merry-go-round was something we used to look for. There was an, uh, occasionally there was a knife grinder that came around. Every uh, vendor that came around was pulled by a horse. A, wag a horse pulled the wagon. Uh, what else? There was so many. Everything was done that way. It was, it was yeah. a very different time. Who, who were your parents? Tell, tell, who were your parents, your father and your mother? Yeah, my, my mother was named Sinek, my father Maurice Friedman. And um, both of them uh, came over. My father was born in, in London, and my mother was from Kiev. Later on, I did visit Kiev. Uh, she told me that they had a farm there, and um, they came over in the very early part of the century. I guess there were some disturbances there. She wrote, uh, she wrote a very brief story about what happened. No details, but she did write that they were anxious to get away from their place. They had a lot of equipment there, they had a lot of animals, but they escaped with a, a minimum amount of stuff, and they were very crowded on the ship coming over, they managed to find, get on a ship that was very crowded, she said. Because she was a very young child, and I mm -hmm. guess she wouldn't remember too much about that. 
but she said when everyone reached the shore, she said there was a great shout uh, of welcome when they saw the Statue of Liberty. That was the greatest thrill that these people had, the, the fact that, that there was a Statue of Liberty there. And um, she, they, were, they were at Ellis Island, they were examined by everybody, uh, all the doctors there. But she said there were some people who were terribly disappointed because they were sent back, they were ill, they had mm -hmm. some disease, and they did not accept people with diseases at the time. Right. And did you, um, do you have any, did you or do you have any siblings? Yes, yes, I have a brother. When, when I have two brothers, except, but um, um, when the first one was born, they decided that there was not enough room in a three-room apartment. So we moved to Belmont Avenue, <coughs> also in the Bronx. And I don't remember how long we stayed there. The only furniture that we had was, uh, what did we have there? We had a nice kitchen. Um, we had a piano. That was all. We had a, an upright piano. And we had a parrot in a cage. That was, that was the, the living room. We also had a telephone, however. Yeah, it was one of those things where the earpiece had, had to be hung up on a hook off the phone, an upstanding phone. Who played the piano? Oh, um, I didn't play at the time. I did start to take lessons. But, um, and uh, my mother had two sisters, Esther and Ada. Esther had a, hus has a, had a boyfriend named Saul, and Ada had a boyfriend named Lester. So, uh, Lester used to sit down at the piano. They visited us every single night. Lester played the, the popular songs at the time, and everybody sang. And as a result, you can tell me any song you know of from that period, and I know all the words. Oh. <laughs> so, I, I don't sing as well as Esther did. Esther had a beautiful voice. But uh, we had, those four people came over regularly. There was nothing else in the living room but that piano and the bench. So, and uh, uh, we, we lived across the street from a movie house. Uh, at that time, the, uh, mothers used to tell children to go outside and play. That was what you did. There was a sidewalk out there. I remember going outside when I was very young. And then I would go across the street through the back door of the movie house. And I saw all the old movies, the silent movies. The music played all the way through. It was beautiful music. And the pictures were, uh, well, Mary Pickford, let's say. Uh, who were some of the others? There were two sisters. I can't remember their names. Gish. Uh, I, I, I Lillian Gish? Pardon? I'm Lillian Gish? Lillian Gish. Oh, yes, yes. And, um, yeah, what was it? Richard Bartholomew and, um, oh, there, there were so many. Well, you've given us a picture of what it was like <coughs> to be in your home. Could you describe your home a little bit from a Jewish point of view? Um, you know, we didn't speak very much about Jewish things. That's the funny part of it. My father never had any Jewish education. And um, my mother did, but she spoke very little about it. She, yeah. So there, there was, I had very little Jewish education at the time. Wow. By the way, I do remember uh, walking out on the, in the shopping area on Tremont Avenue and seeing a, a picture of President Harding in the <laughs> window. In every store, every store had a picture of the, of the president who had died. And it said, we mourn our loss. And how old were you then? Maybe five or six. six. Yeah. 
Right. Oh, my. And, and th there was also a big picture of Uncle Sam in the corner grocery store, and it said, We want you. <laughs> I can remember that. I used to make faces at it. So that was, that was my story in the Bronx. We moved to a private home right after that and stayed there a short while. Um, but I used to go out and do shopping for my mother. Very different time. What was your school like? What was school like for you? What kind of education did you have? My first school was PS32. That was when we lived uh, near the Bronx Zoo. I did not, I was not friendly with most of the children there because they all had earrings and somehow that made them different from me. That was, yeah, they, they may have all, I, I don't know what area they were from. Um, when we moved, I went to a public school 44 and I remember being there until I was in the sixth grade where the, the teacher once picked me up, Mr. Oaken, picked me up in front of the class <laughs> because I guess I sat in the front seat. And um, so that, that was my experience. And, and when I was in the second grade, I remember the, the principal coming in. They were very strict at the time. They were extremely strict with children. And um, uh, the teacher in the second grade was um, uh, never had a smile on her face. When the principal walked in, the teacher pointed at me and she said, that one. And I had no idea what was happening. The principal took me out of the room and held me by the hand, walked me into the third grade class. That was the way they did it. <laughs> So, you can see they were very, very strict all the way through. Wow. What about um, high school? Um, the high school um, was started when I came to Brooklyn. Um, I, I, we came to Brooklyn when I was in the seventh grade. Uh, that was PS 197. And I had no idea what religion anybody was. Nobody spoke about religion. And, um, and anybody was, we were friendly with all of them. That's all. I went to James Madison High School after that. And um, James Madison, I thought, was a wonderful school. I enjoyed every minute of it. And, um, uh, there again, we formed a bridge club. The girls had a, a two-table bridge club all the way through high school. And I don't know what their religions were. I don't know. I'm sure they were, we were mixed. And there was never any mention at all of that religion. You moved around a lot. What, what did your father do and, and your mother? Oh, my father was... Uh, building up a business. Uh, my mother was home with the children, of course. <laughs> right. now, now, my father um, had a, um, a business connected with advertising. It was die cutting. Um, it was uh, advertising displays that used to go in the store windows or pack it, that used to package things. And um, he did very well. He built that up. I went down to the uh, to his office frequently. It started out. He had one secretary, uh, a small office, and the secretary was a man, Mr. Mellon. Uh, Mellon. His name was. We only call people by their last names, not even Mister. Um, he started out that way, and the business grew. The, he had a little shop uh, in connection with with the, with the, the um, uh, a very very large piece of machinery, which didn't mean much to me, but it was a press, and the business grew until he had uh, fifty people working there, with uh, a lot of 
big pieces of machinery. I knew everybody who worked in the shop, and they stayed there for years and years, and the office staff grew, and eventually um, my husband, who was a teacher in New Haven, my husband was convinced that he ought to enter the business. So let's back up a little bit. Yeah. And uh, tell us how you met your husband. Um, when we lived in Brooklyn, um, and my, yeah, my older brother, both my brothers were younger than I. The second one was 10 years younger. I used to take care of him. Uh, help my mother at least, you know. Um, but when my, the older brother was nine years old, he went to camp. And my, my parents went to visit him. Um, by the way, the reason he went to this particular camp was that the, the aunt who um, uh, used to go with Lester, the one who played the piano, had, uh, Lester's brother had recommended this camp. That, that's the way you found out about things. And it was a wonderful camp, Camp Mitchell Harley. Uh, my brother went there, he was very happy uh, when my parents went to visit him. And when my parents came home, my father spoke very highly of my brother's counselor. So the next week, when they went to visit, I decided to go to camp. I never wanted to go, I was 13, and I thought I was too old to be a camper. But I went up to camp with, it, with them, and I met my brother's counselor, and then I told my parents that I would stay and try camp out a bit. So I stayed, and from then on, I kept going back to the camp, and I saw my husband uh, dating other girls. He was much older than I seven years older. It seemed like a lot then. And then there was one year when my father had a boat. We decided to take a trip through the Hudson River up to Lake Champlain. I did not go to camp that year. I went with the family on the boat trip. Went up the Hudson River, made many stops along the way, and I swam in the Hudson waters all the way up. When we got to Lake Champlain, I used to dive in from the boat in the ice cold water of Lake Champlain and I thought it was delicious. But after three weeks on the boat, I said to my father, I'm going to camp. And then I left the boat, he took me to the train, and I got my clothes, went home, got my clothes, by the way, I went home carrying a suitcase, went home by myself, nobody was there. Then I traveled, went to the BMT, walked a half mile with a suitcase to the, to the train, walked, went to Grand Central, took the train from Grand Central to Cachette, New York, took a taxi to camp, went into the office, and I said to Eddie Mitchell, I want a job. And camp had already started. And he gave me the job, taking care of some little ones, and also working in arts and crafts. And from then, I, oh, the first thing I did before I met my children there, I walked to the baseball field, and my husband was there. And he smiled, hello, and I smiled, hello, and we dated from then on. And uh, when did you get married? When I was 21. And what I year was, was that? Um, I was 20 when I, that year. And from then on, uh, we, we were together. He, uh, he took a graduate course at NYU. And it happened that I was taking a graduate course at NYU too. Well, so let me ask you, where did you go to college? Brooklyn College. And what did you study? I studied art and music. 
art major, music minor. Music was always in my life. I, I, had, I started to I, I play the piano. Uh, I started to get lessons when I was uh, about eight or nine years old. Oh, I don't know, maybe 10, I don't remember. Just, uh, just briefly, but one of my father's brothers, Uncle Willie, played the piano beautifully. And he was particularly good on Bach. And, and uh, uh, there was one number of Bach that he used to play very, very fast. And my desire, my entire life, my desire was to play the Bach, that, that one on Bach, the way Uncle Willie played it. And if you look at my piano, it's still up there. I still try to play it. <laughs> Can't do it. But anyway. I, I do play the piano for myself. I, I'm, I'm not good, but I play it because I like it. And uh, we, we don't have your husband's name. What was his name? Joe. Joe Ralph. Joe Ralph. And where did he go to college? Were you both at Brooklyn College? Oh, Joe went to, he went to Arnold College. It's a small college. And I recently, in going through some of my old newspaper clippings, uh, I found out that Andy Robustelli also went to Arnold College. So I finally found somebody <laughs> who went to Arnold College. He graduated from Arnold College. He was a, um, a, a, well, a, beside, a physical ed. Uh, he was a gymnast. Yeah. And he used to flip around the, I tell you, I never couldn't believe anybody could do some of the things that he did there. And he said his father once came uh, to see him, and his father almost had a heart attack. Uh, but by the way, you want to talk a little bit about uh, uh, religion. He came from an Orthodox family. His father was very close to Rabbi Shabbatovich in New, in New Haven. And he was an extremely religious man, so was his mother. His mother was very particular. <coughs> uh, 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 Joe always, he, he, he wrote about his memoirs, and one of the stories that he wrote was how his father bought chicken and how his mother cooked the chicken. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I have a lot of stories that Joe wrote. He wrote about the um, uh, Jewish area in New Haven and how he shopped along uh, Oak Street and um, exactly the stores that were there. And uh, So he was from New Haven? He was from New Haven. And did you have a Jewish wedding? Oh yes. Since oh, his yes. parents we had a were rabbi. Very, oh, yeah. very religious. But uh, we had a problem with the wedding. We found that after going together for this one year, every, we would meet every Friday night at Rockefeller Center. He would uh, go to his class at, New, uh, at NYU, and I would go to the Museum of Art where I had my NYU class. That was, I, I, had, I took a course in, uh, in modern architecture. So after our classes, we would meet at Rockefeller Center at the statue. And so you can understand that some of those things I remember very, very clearly. We did every uh, restaurant in New York, every language, every, <laughs> every restaurants from every country, and we ate all kinds of food. Now don't forget, Joe is accustomed to eating only kosher food. So you were his education. Yeah. And, um, but on the other hand, when we did get married, I kept a kosher house because I wanted his parents to visit me. And um, his mother, if I did anything that wasn't quite right, his mother was very gentle about suggesting it. His parents knew, his parents knew that I wasn't too well educated. And um, I, I do want to say this, that, that 
when we lived in Brooklyn, my best friend, Flory, and I used to visit churches. We visit various churches, because, mostly on holidays. We wanted to see how they celebrated. So there, there was an interest in religion at that time. I see. Yeah. So you uh, were you got married, you finished up at NYU, and you moved to New Haven. How long did you live there? We lived in New Haven until 1949. Quite a we, while. We, we built a house. Well, we, we first we moved to an apartment, and the only, the only piece of furniture in the apartment, besides a bedroom, was a piano. This is the piano right here. And did Joe Still. play the piano too? Or no, just you? No, no. And he was not a musician. He was, although he did play a musical sort. When he entertained at camp, I, I, did, I mentioned to you that he was an athlete. But he also took care of the entertainment on certain nights when they had no other programs. He was an MC. Uh, he was a great entertainer, he did all kinds of magic tricks. He played the saw, he played the spoons. Do you ever play the spoons? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the spoons are, it, it's a rhythm thing. So he was a terrific entertainer, and he did that every year. That He was at camp uh, quite a few years. So what did the two of you do in New Haven? How did you earn your livings? In, in New Haven, we, we had an apartment, and um, uh, my, my son was born um, in Grace New Haven, Grace Hospital. It was just Grace Hospital at the time. He was born in New Haven at that time. And your husband was working. What did he do? My husband was teaching at Fairhaven Junior High at first, but he became a supervisor. And he went around to all the schools. And by the way, when he was um, doing the gymnastic tricks, uh, exercise, whatever you'd call them, he um, he and a, one of the other men uh, used to go around at, to all the schools in that area. I think in uh, all through Connecticut, he wrote articles about. As some of the various activities he was on. You know, he was in the newspaper quite a few times. That's why I have the albums with all the publicity. He had, uh, he did um, a complete, there was something they had at, at Yale um, Field that was um, like a centennial sort of thing. I don't remember what exactly what it was, mm -hmm. but he planned all the activities of this particular event. And uh, during the war, I've never mentioned to you anything about the war. Right, you were there until 1949, so yeah. you lived through World War II we, there? We lived, yeah. He, uh, after school, he, he had a job at Whitney Blake, and he did a lot of, um, um, they, they didn't, they, uh, we, we had a baby, they never took people. They never took young men with baby with children at the time, and um, so. But in, instead, he was working, at, uh, and he um, he coated wire. He also did something. They were coating wire for for the use in the war. It was a new coating that they must have been practicing on. But he also collected milkweed pods. The, yes, you never heard of that. I know that. But um, apparently, they were using milkweed pods to fill to float rubber boats. I don't know much about it, so I really can't tell you. But all I know is that he received a citation for having collected the most milkweed pods. The schools did it, of course. He went, all the children in all the schools co were collecting milkweed pods during the war. Something that most people never heard of. And it, it's in the newspaper. I have all the newspaper articles about it. Um, 
And anyway, he did receive a, a nice citation for that accomplishment. Also, during the war, he became your neighborly gardener. That was his name. He gave advice for uh, war gardens, and he would go around in New Haven. He visited people who had gardens and gave them uh, information on what to do about the gardens. Wow, and you were there through 1949. Where were you when Israel was announced as a state? Well, um, do you remember hearing of Israel being announced as a state on the radio? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yes, yes, we, yeah, yeah. Yes, if th things were a little different then, you know, we, we knew a little more about the war. We did not know about uh, what was going on during Hitler's years. Yeah, I was, uh, we were married in 1937, so that gives you an idea how, mm -hmm. how long I was in New Haven, till 49. So quite a while. Well, what, uh, what brought you to Stanford? Um, the fact is that he started to work in the uh, die cutting business in New York. He, he quit the school system. Uh, he, uh, he, he reached a point where he was a supervisor and um, he, he didn't know if he was going to get a job as a principal. He was in line for it, but my, my father convinced him that the money would be much better working in New York. So, uh, he did. And there's one thing about him. So, uh, so he, how did he get to New York? The, the he, he, he traveled by train mm -hmm. to New York and uh, he, he played cards on the train. <laughs> That's what the, all the commuters, there were a lot of commuters to New York at the time. And when we, we reached the point, we, we figured, well, it's time for us to move a little closer and make it a little easier for him. And since my parents lived in Yonkers at the time, and um, uh, that was before they moved to Stanford, um, we, um, we just decided that we might as well move closer to New York, which we did. So, uh, and then he took the train in to New York? He took the train. He traveled to New York for many years, yeah. And, and how large was your family when you moved here? You had uh, how many uh, children? Yes. Um, well, when we built the house in, uh, in New Haven, well, we built the house in New Haven first. Uh, when we built the house in Stamford, it was in 59. And um, uh, my son was ready to have his bar mitzvah, or getting ready for it. Wait a minute, I I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm, I made a mistake. We, we moved here in 59. We moved to, to Stanford in 49. And you moved to this house in 59? And, and, no, oh, yeah. no, in 49 we moved to Holbrook Estates. At the time, there were, Holbrook Estates had only three houses there, and I must tell you, am I allowed to say, uh, there were no Jews here, but we bought property, Pond Webb was our agent, we bought the property in, in Holbrook Estates, and we built a house there. And. Um, when when we, we moved in, Bob, let's see, it, um, he, he was eight, eight, nine years, eight years old, yeah. And I, I, even now I have to think back, <laughs> I have to think back. But um, he started to study at the Jewish Center with Abe Hecht. And yeah, and then, and uh, there were two organizations in Stamford, a good Shalom mm -hmm. on Grove Street and Temple Bethel. And 
and um, we joined Temple Bethel and I became active right away. Uh, actually, I became active. When I came to Stanford, um, I started to uh, uh, visit various clubs. I wanted to meet a few people here. We knew nobody except my parents. My parents lived on Partridge Road. Uh, uh, wait a minute, where did they, do they live? I think they, they live near the museum first. Schofield Town Road. They were on, I'm sorry, they were on Schofield Town Road first. Right near where the Atio Pinza Theatre was. And they had that uh, very nice house there. And we visited frequently. We used to drive down Bedford Street. It was, everything was country. It was all country. Bedford Street had those beautiful big old houses, all framework with front porches. And um, we got used to going to the Avon Theatre when we visited. And we got attached to Stanford. We thought Stanford was a good place to go to, if you were getting closer to New York. But even before we moved to Stanford, however, we did go to Westchester. We, we found a house in Harrison, but it was near a cemetery. We didn't want that. We found a house <laughs> in, 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 in uh, I don't know, one of the other towns. We looked around, and then we, but Stanford was where we decided to go. So, first thing we did when we moved into the house, we had a nice builder who was very cooperative with us. And um, by the way, my husband did work on the house too. He became a carpenter. My husband believed in learning everything. And when we used to walk through New York, at the time he was taking the courses, and we visited restaurants, there were times when he'd stop and talk to people who were working in the street, people who were digging holes or, piggy or working cement. And he would stop and talk to everybody. And I used to say, why, why do you do that? You don't know these people. And he said, there isn't anybody in the world you can't learn something from. What an amazing statement. And well, you were learning in Stanford. You mentioned the organizations. What, what organizations did you um, get involved with? The first thing I did was to join the Scouts. We be, I became a Cub Scout mother. And... Um, I got acquainted with some of the other Cub Scout mothers from other places. Uh, uh, he went to Belltown School. Mr. Brown was the principal there. Mr. Brown was a very strict principal, very strict. But we got to know him and got to know Mayor Quigley. Uh, one of the reasons I got to know Mayor Quigley was that when we moved here, we found there were holes in the road. But the... Still are. Yeah, the property... <laughs> was a, a, a private property and I figured that if other people started to move in uh, we should be, um, uh, you know, the, the city should take over the roads. So I invited Mayor Quigley to a meeting at my house. That was one of the things I did. <laughs> I got involved. I went down to City Hall a few times. I did a few things like that. But in the meantime, about the children, um, I, I also started a Cub Mothers Club because I figured, well, I'm not the only Cub Mother here. There are others from other schools. And we got together, and I became the president of the Cub Mothers Club. <laughs> in the meantime, um, what happened? Mayor Ken I got to know Mayor Kennedy, too. I, um, but anyway... It, it went on. I just kept getting involved in things. After Cub Mothers, by the way, I did. Uh, I became the um, an advisor for Boy Sc uh, an advisor on activities for Boy Scouts, and uh, uh, mostly because I did artwork. And I kept figuring out new things to do. I had to practice when I used to go to camp. You know, we were and. Um, by the way, during that way, we also tried to buy a cab. 
during that time. We tried to buy a can. And we were looking around in Connecticut. And uh, we were, uh, we, you know, my husband was used to being a, a camper, and he was, he became a director at, uh, at a couple of camps later on after we left Camp Mitchell. That was after we were married. And then we decided not to buy a camp because there was a polio epidemic. And that was in the 50s. Yeah. And uh, so, it, you know, I, I know I'm jumping around, but it's because all of these things happened at once. You know, so uh, we, we decided against buying a camp. I didn't want to get involved with hurting anybody else's children. But I did like to work with children. Right. And you had, uh, you mentioned earlier that you um, made your son, or uh, had a bar mitzvah for your son. Will you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, we had a wonderful bar mitzvah. <laughs> yeah, I, because, you see, I got involved in a temple. That was the thing you wanted me. <laughs> That's what I wanted to talk about to begin with. And I, I guess I branched out. Yes, I got involved. I was on the board, the sisterhood board. And I worked my way up for some reason or other. Not, not because I wanted to, but, you know, it happens that way. And I reached the point where I was vice president and B. Wafsi was the president. And when Bin Wafsi was finished, she said, she said to me, it's your turn now. And I said, B, I cannot speak to groups of people. <laughs> I'm too shy. <laughs> I was a shy person. Okay. So she said, when you get up there in the temple and you're standing from the pulpit, in front of a group of people, you're going to say something because you're not going to make a fool of yourself. And anyway, I became president of the Sisterhood of Temple Bethel. And what kinds of things did you get accomplished there? We used to uh, raise money for the, the education for the school. The school was small. And uh, um, we had guest speakers, we had demonstration, artist demonstration, because I was an artist too. Um, we, uh, I knew a lot of artists. That was one of my sidelines during that time. <laughs> um, the, uh, I knew a lot of artists because I... Who did you know? Well, George Sutherland is still around. I knew Bob Calvo was the first president of the um, Art Association. What happened with the art? You want me to branch off into the uh, art association? Yes, we really haven't discussed your art. A lot of money. But it was because I always did my own work. I did a lot of work of my own. And, and he was very cautious about how he selected, he selected the trips. And we traveled all over the world, many places, and we took a lot of pictures. And um, my family wasn't interested in seeing all my pictures. So I figured, well, I'm not going to waste them. I'm going to show them. <laughs> um, we formed a club. Um, I didn't do, I didn't form it. It was um, Joe Pullman. And Tony, um, Tony, Tony, oh dear, can't remember, sorry. Okay. Tony, I'm sorry. <laughs> Joe, they, they got together and they formed a discussion group, which met at UConn. And the Pullmans were very close friends and neighbors of ours on Apple Tree Drive. And so I used to go to this discussion group. They would talk about different countries of the world, 
Where were some of the places that you went? Some of the places? Uh, well, well, I can t tell you very quickly. The first trip we took was a trip all through uh, Europe, many countries of Europe. Um, and um, that, that was just traveling through Europe. But actually, uh, I, I must say this, we, we didn't fly at first. My husband did not was not anxious to fly, and one of the reasons was that um, when we were going together, when, before we got married, <laughs> my father, uh, who was also adventurous, was had been taking lessons in in flying. Yes, wow. and my one day when when Joe came to visit me, my father said, hey, "I'm going to take you on a ride in a plane." So he happened to take him, and this was a, a, a person who used to do tricks with a plane. He flipped it around. <laughs> and my husband was not enthusiastic about going into planes anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, so our first trips were across the ocean. In, the first trip was the Independent, which later docked in Hawaii. And years later, when we went to Hawaii, we were on the same sh on the same mm -hmm. ship, mm -hmm. and we met the, uh, the man who was the captain of the original Independent. But after that, uh, we finally uh, found that we had to fly in order to get someplace, and uh, so we took trips two trips a year, and we were very economical. We never spent more than we had planned to spend. And we saw all of these places. I took pictures of everybody all over the place. And I painted. All my pictures that you see here around the house are remind me of the trips that we took. Did you ever go to Israel? Oh, Did you ever go to Israel? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. The first trip was a, a Mediterranean cruise uh, which docked in Haifa. Mm -hmm. And from then on, uh, we, we, when we went to Haifa, we were on our own. Uh, we hired a taxi to go to Tel Aviv. We hired, uh, and we went to different places. Um, uh, we did a lot of traveling then. Uh, after that, we went to um, we went to Israel when we went to Egypt. So you'd go, you wouldn't go to Israel first and then Egypt. You go to Egypt first. And then you go to Israel. Okay. We went through the Gaza Strip. We saw the, the children all in uniform. They looked beautiful. I don't, everything was peaceful. It was just beautiful there. Everything. When, when was that? That was when Golda Meir mm -hmm. was the president. And, and we sat near Golda Meir when they had the, the 25th anniversary parade. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a parade and their equipment marched by. When we went to the uh, stadium, I don't remember which where it was, but when we went there, along the route to the stadium, I remember that there was military lined up here and there, so scattered around on rooftops. And anyway, we saw this parade, and that was, that was one time when we went to Israel. And another time, um, well, that was not when we, we took the Egypt trip. I believe that was when we took the cruise. Uh, we went to Israel and Jordan. We went to Jordan. Yeah. yeah, okay. We visited Jordan, and it was very peaceful there. There was no problem getting back and forth from Israel to Jordan. And we had very high regard for the, uh, the uh, uh, what was the king of Jordan at the time? Uh, Hussein. Yeah. And by the way, when we went to Egypt, I have to go back again. When we went to Egypt, it was right after Sadat's, uh, yeah. Um, we saw the memorial that was put up to Sadat. It was put up the shape of a pyramid, you know, like this. And there were guards there all the time. 
so that was another time we went to. Um, we, we went to Israel, um, I'm trying to think of what it was. We, we were in Israel a few times. And have you been to the Far East? Oh yes, yeah. We, we were in Japan and uh, we went to Nagasaki, and, you know, place like that, yeah. Japan, the, the children in Japan were so wonderful. They were so friendly, they were so delightful. They would come up to you and apologize and say, my name is so-and-so, what's your name? And these were school children. They were very, very well disciplined. They were wonderful. Um, we went to China and Hong Kong and um, um, Singapore and uh, we went to Thailand. Went to a lot of places. Thailand, Nepal. Uh, I had, see, I have a book here from. Um, this is my grandson. Uh, my son eventually adopted a boy in Nepal. A lovely, lovely little boy there. Uh, that had nothing to do with our trip. It just happened that way. Well, let me ask you about your family to sort of bring all of this together. You have a son and a daughter. Yeah. And now you have grandchildren and... Two sons. I have, have two sons. Mm -hmm. The son was an ophthalmologist, as, as he was, he is, he is, he just retired. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and my son, Larry, is at the Boston Museum of Science. He started off in the pink tent. He was... This was the start for him. The, he, he did the lighting and the electricity in the pink tent. And he transferred this to some of the work he was doing at the Boston Museum of Science. And he's been in the exhibits, doing the exhibits. And right now he gets exhibits from different parts of the world. Amazing. And your daughter lives here in Stanford? My daughter lives very close, yes. And, and what she, does she do? She's a wonderful cook. She is, uh, uh, she, she does a lot of things. It's hard to say. Um, she keeps the family together. She's a great cook. And one of the reasons she's a great cook is because when she was in high school, and she used to say, Mother, it's time for dinner. And dinner isn't started yet. I would say to her, uh, I'm doing a painting. I would say to her, you start it. And uh, she is, she's really a very innovative cook. She does very nicely. Well, you have seen so many things and you have given us so many beautiful things. What, what's your advice for uh, future generations, for your grandchildren and great-grandchildren and the children who are in Stanford it, it, It's hard to advise anybody when you see what's going on in the world today, and I'm not going to stick my neck out. <laughs> but um, uh, I, I, I'll tell you, I, I went around to a lot of nursing homes and stuff and, and uh, we, when we did the travelogues. That's one thing. I'm not being... Oh, I think. No. Is it finished? There's one yeah. that you want to pan around later? Yeah. Yes. So give us your give us your best life lesson. My best, I I would say to keep a positive attitude and and smile. I have a, of the poem that I uh, printed uh, on the computer that I I handed out wherever I went. The thing that goes the farthest that make uh, that's making life worthwhile that costs the least and does the most is just a pleasant smile. Thank you so very much. You're welcome. And we are going to ask you to walk around and we'll pan some of your beautiful artwork. These are some of these. Oh, this is George sketching. Just a quick sketch. When you well, can, we, can we do the stuff on the walls because that will be easier okay. to see. Oh, you, oh, oh, you're taking pictures? Yep. Mm -hmm. oh, 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 I didn't realize. Okay. <laughs> I, I thought you just, yeah. Okay. Um, 
the wall, the wall goes all around the world. This whole world. The drawings, Spain. Uh, that's the, the Daniel Brewer, Budapest. Um, this is the Peter and Paul, um, well, uh, I don't know what it is today, Peter, in, in Russia, in, uh, what is it called today? Petersburg? St. Petersburg. Uh, Petersburg. Petersburg. Mm -hmm. with my I don't know. Right, right. Had all these names. That's the uh, Catholic school with a nun in, in, um, You know, I know this what happened to me. Looks like Spain, but uh, and, uh, Spain or, or it's uh, yeah, it, it's. Uh, oh, this one I can't, I can't. What are, what are these pictures over here? Um, that that one is that moon. Mm -hmm. That was inspired when they when they first went to the moon. And the flowers and birds over here. Yeah, they. The flat, that, that is in um, Norway. That is Norway. There's our Ireland, the Alaska. It's um, in them. Um, How about walking us over to your sculpture over here? And those are your, your children, this, this, the bus? These are your children? Yes. Your son and your daughter? Mm -hmm. And then over here, there's your pictures that, everywhere. That's Egypt. This is Egypt. And this is the, um, who's playing the violin? That was inspired by someone in television. That's all. This is Portugal. Wow. And, and Spain. Yeah, that's Portugal and Spain. It's a water man. I did an oil painting of him. And it looks like this is some of your ceramics up here on the top. Oh, when I got married, Joe decided to do uh, some artwork too. He, because he figured that was something he never did before. He was an athlete. So he did the wood carvings. Yeah. He did all of these wood carvings. And, uh, and he did, he did show some paintings too. So. Oh, you want to know a Jewish? I had, I had a number of Jewish uh, platters that I made, but I, most of them were done for people. Yes, yeah, so I have the, there's the tablets of uh, just a little model. Uh huh. Yeah. The Ten Commandments. Yeah, that's um, yes. Over by the lamp. I, can get yeah, I thought you would get something Jewish in there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what else. Israel, where's the Israel group? Okay. So, well, you have so many beautiful things, and thank you so thank much. You. Oh, thank you for coming. I, anyway, um, I, I just didn't know where to begin. This Australia, by the way. That, 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 yeah, that's mm -hmm. the center of Australia. Algas, that's the algas. That's beautiful. Uh, you have such beautiful things. And and you told me you're involved in, you're writing it all up, right? Yeah. The, uh, the, um, I'm doing that, but the thing that I spent 20 years on, the, these things. You know, I, I did get published. Good idea. It's recording. It's, how do I do standby? That's okay. Well, today is March 23rd, 2011. It is my pleasure to be interviewing Elsie Ralph for the Jewish Historical Society of Lower Fairfield County. My name is Elisa Kaplan, the interviewer, and Marcy Schoenfeld is the videographer. was because I always did my own work. I did a lot of work of my own and 
and he was very cautious about how he selected he selected the trips and we traveled all over the world many places and we took a lot of pictures and um, my family wasn't interested in seeing all my pictures so I figured well I'm not going to waste them I'm going to show them <laughs> um, we formed a club um, I didn't do I didn't form it it was um, Joe Pullman and Tony um, Tony Tony oh dear can't remember sorry Tony, I'm sorry. <laughs> Joe Pullman, they got together and they formed a discussion group which met at Yukon. And the Pullmans were very close friends and neighbors of ours on Apple Tree Drive. And so I used to go to this discussion group. They would talk about different countries of the world. Where were some of the places that you went? Some of the places? Uh, well, well, I can t tell you very quickly, the first trip we took was a trip all through uh, Europe, many countries of Europe. Um, and um, that, that was just traveling through Europe. But actually, uh, I, I must say this, we, we didn't fly at first. My husband did not was not anxious to fly, and one of the reasons was that um, when we were going together, when, before we got married, <laughs> my father, uh, who was also adventurous, was had been taking lessons in in flying. Yes, wow. and my one day when when Joe came to visit me, my father said, yeah, "I'm going to take you on a ride in a plane." So he happened to take him, and this was a, a, a person who used to do tricks with a plane. He flipped it around. <laughs> and my husband was not enthusiastic about going into planes anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, so our first trips were across the ocean. In, the first trip was the Independent, which later docked in Hawaii. And years later, when we went to Hawaii, we were on the same sh on the same okay. ship, mm -hmm. and we met the, uh, the man who was the captain of the original Independent. But after that, uh, when we finally uh, found that we had to fly in order to get someplace, and uh, so we took trips two trips a year, and we were very economical. We never spent more than we had planned to spend. And we saw all of these places. I took pictures of everybody all over the place. And I painted all my pictures that you see here around the house are remind me of the trips that we took. Did you ever go to Israel? Oh, Did you ever go to Israel? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. The first trip was a, a Mediterranean cruise uh, which docked in Haifa. Mm -hmm. And from then on, uh, we, we, when we went to Haifa, we were on our own. Uh, we hired a taxi to go to Tel Aviv. We hired, uh, and we went to different places. Um, uh, we did a lot of traveling then. Uh, after that, we went to um, we went to Israel when we went to Egypt. So you'd go, you wouldn't go to Israel first and then Egypt. You go to Egypt first. And then you go to Israel. Okay. We went through the Gaza Strip. We saw the, the children all in uniform. They looked beautiful. I don't, everything was peaceful. It was just beautiful there. Everything. When, when was that? That was when Golda Bayer mm -hmm. was the president. And and we sat near Golda Meir when they had the the 25th anniversary parade. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a parade and their equipment marched by. When we went to the uh, stadium, I don't remember which where it was, but when we went there, along the route to the stadium, I remember that there was military 
lined up here and there, so scattered around on rooftops. And anyway, we saw this parade, and that was that was one time when we went to Israel. Uh, and another time, um, well, that was not when we took the Egypt trip. I believe that was when we took the cruise. Uh, we went to Israel and Jordan. We went to Jordan. Yeah, okay. We visited Jordan and it was very peaceful there. There was no problem getting back and forth from Israel to Jordan. And we had very high regard for the, uh, the uh, it, what was the king of Jordan at the time? Uh, Hussein. Yeah. And by the way, when we went to Egypt, I have to go back again. When we went to Egypt, it was right after Sadat's, uh, yeah. Um, we saw the memorial that was put up to Sadat. It was put up the shape of a pyramid, you know, like this. And there were guards there all the time. So that was another time we went to. Um, we, we went to Israel, um, I'm trying to think of when it was. We, we were in Israel a few times. And have you been to the Far East? Oh yes, yeah. We we were in Japan, and uh, we went to Nagasaki, and you know, place like that. Yeah, Japan. The the children in Japan were so wonderful. They were so friendly. They so delightful. They would come up to you and apologize and say, "My name is so and so. What's your name?" And these were school children. They were very, very well disciplined. They were wonderful. Um, we went to China and Hong Kong and um, um, Singapore and uh, went to Thailand. Uh, uh, went to a lot of places. Thailand, Nepal. Uh, I, had, see, I have a book here from, um, this is my grandson. Uh, my son eventually adopted a boy in Nepal. A lovely, lovely little boy there. Uh, that had nothing to do with our trip. It just happened that way. Well, let me ask you about your family to sort of bring all of this together. You have a son and a daughter, yeah. and now you have grandchildren. And two sons. I have, have two sons. Mm -hmm. son was an ophthalmologist, as, as he was, he is, he is, he just retired. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and my son Larry is at the Boston Museum of Science. He started off in the pink tent. He was, this was the start for him. The, he, he did the lighting and the electricity in the pink tent. And he transferred this to some of the work he was doing at the Boston Museum of Science. And he's been in the exhibits, doing the exhibits. And right now he gets exhibits from different parts of the world. Amazing. And your daughter lives here in Stanford? My daughter lives very close, yes. Yeah, and, and what she, does she do? She's a wonderful cook. She is, uh, uh, she, she does a lot of things, it's hard to say. Um, she keeps the family together. She's a great cook, and one of the reasons she's a great cook is because when she was in high school, and she used to say, Mother, it's time for dinner, and dinner isn't started yet, I would say to her, uh, I'm doing a painting, I would say to her, you start it. And uh, she is, she's really a very innovative cook. She does very nicely. Well, you have seen so many things and you have given us so many beautiful things what what's your advice for uh, future generations for your grandchildren and great-grandchildren and the children who are in Stanford it, it's now? hard to advise anybody uh, when you see what's going on in the world today and I'm not going to stick my neck out <laughs> but um, uh, I, I, t I tell you, I, d I went around to learning nursing homes and stuff, and, and uh, we, when we did the travelogues. 
that's one thing. I'm not being with my no. okay. Is it finished? That's one yeah. that you want to pan around later? Yeah. Yes. So give us your give us your best life lesson. My best I I would say to keep a positive attitude and and smile. I have a, of the poem that I uh, printed uh, on the computer that I, I handed out wherever I went. The thing that goes the farthest, that make, uh, that's making life worthwhile, that costs the least and does the most, is just a pleasant smile. Thank you so very much. You're welcome. And we are going to ask you to walk around and we'll pan some of your beautiful artwork. These are some of these. Oh, this is George sketching. Just a quick sketch. When you oh, can, we, can we do the stuff on the walls? Because that'll be easier okay. to see. Oh, you. Oh, oh, you're taking pictures. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 I didn't realize. Okay. <laughs> I, I thought you just. Yeah. Okay. Um. The wall. The wall goes all around the world. This whole world. The drawings. Spain. Uh, that's the, the Daniel Brewer, Budapest. Um, this is the Peter and Paul, um, well, uh, I don't know what it is today, Peter, in, in Russia, in, uh, what is it called today? Petersburg? St. Petersburg. 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 Mm -hmm. I don't know. Right, right. I had all these names. That's the uh, Catholic school with a nun in, in um, You know, I noticed what happened to me. Looks like Spain, but uh, in the, Spain or, or it's uh, yeah, it, it's. Uh, oh, this one, okay. I what if, what are these pictures over here? Um, that that one is that moon. Mm -hmm. That was inspired when they when they first went to the moon. And the flowers and birds over here. Yeah, they. But that, that, that was in um, Norway. That was Norway. There's our Ireland, the Alaska. It's um, in them. Um, How about walking us over to your sculpture over here? And those are your, your children, this, this, the bus? These are your children? Yes. Your son and your daughter? Mm -hmm. And then over here, there's your pictures that, everywhere. That's Egypt. This is Egypt. And this is the, um, who's playing the violin? That was inspired by someone in television. That's all. This is Portugal. Wow. And, and Spain. Yeah, that's Portugal and Spain. It's a water man. I did an oil painting of him. And it looks like this is some of your ceramics up here on the top. Oh, when we got married, Joe decided to do uh, some artwork too. He, because he figured that was something he never did before. He was an athlete. So he did the wood carvings. Yeah. He did all of these wood carvings. And, uh, and he did, he did show some paintings too. So. Oh, you want to know what Jewish? I had, I had a number of Jewish uh, platters that I made, but most of them were done for people. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so I have the, there's the tablets of just a little model. Uh huh. Yeah. The Ten Commandments. Yeah, that's. Um, yes. Over by the lamp. Oh. I can get Get something Jewish and there it is. Let's see what else. Israel, where's the Israel group? Okay. So now you have so many beautiful things, and thank you so thank much. You. Oh, thank you for coming. I, anyway, um, I, I just didn't know where to begin. This Australia, by the way. That, that the, yeah, that's mm -hmm. the center of Australia. Algas. That's algas. That's beautiful. Uh, 
have such beautiful things. And and you told me you're involved in you're writing it all up, right? Yeah. The uh, the um, I'm doing that, but the thing that I spent twenty years on the these things. You know, I I did get published. Good idea. What's recording? It's how do I do standby? Oh, shit. That's okay. Well, today is March twenty third, two thousand and eleven. It is my pleasure to be interviewing Elsie Ralph for the Jewish Historical Society of Lower Fairfield County. My name is Elisa Kaplan, the interviewer, and Marcy Schoenfeld is the videographer.